the microphone is the oh recording is in progress so i got an interesting voice warning fun so when you're capturing audio in the real world uh choosing the appropriate microphone for your application is pretty much like the main thing so like whether you're recording like dialogue on set for a film or like an audio podcast or like a musical performance like depending on where you need to be in relation to the source uh how loud the source is what else is going on around you you know uh choose just choosing an appropriate microphone like for the uh for the context is is like the whole name of the game uh if you you know it all starts at the source um so there are a bunch of different kinds of mics as we might expect uh and and so like which one you ought to choose uh is is like you know like i said depends on what you're doing um so uh we're talking if we're talking specifically about film there's there's kind of like very broadly two categories of microphones that get used to record audio for film on set those are uh like boom microphones which are a shot or shotgun microphones uh boom is the job shotgun is the microphone type oh did i lose the internet you're good did you're there. my internet connection die you're there you're y'all are frozen oh. <laughs> we we can hear you though uh -oh. um also if you turn off Did we lose video, Corey. i think so but if you turn off your video it might help <clears throat> Corey, do you want to come in here <laughs> okay Sorry. he's gonna come and sit in the i think yeah our wi-fi is sort of just not quite working all the way yet since in a new space we've been having issues with the wi-fi so but i'm, I'm on a direct connection so it should be better all right, here he is. Here I come. Here's a boom mic too. Oh, hooray. Yeah, so so boom is the job. So boom, booming is like when you're gonna like set, have a mic overhead or or like out of the shot. Um, and so we have these like, what are called shotgun microphone, which are these long uh, tubes uh, that are designed in a certain way. Um, they require all this like, like a special pole to hold them up and like what's called a shock mount to prevent handling noise. So anytime you're gonna hand hold a mic and move it around, you need a tool called a shock mount. Um, yeah. So uh, the other common like onset microphone is like a, a lavalier microphone, like a clip on mic. Um, we don't have a great example of those. Uh, currently uh right now but uh if you've ever seen like or used one of those like that's the other kind of main, main type of microphone um oh yeah here's here's a, a very bulky very very bulky laugh uh, <laughs> they get a lot smaller than this uh, clips onto the shirt blah 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 um so uh i'm talking on on the trusty old sm58 now uh, which is another type of microphone this is kind of a a general purpose uh like sort of vocal or dialogue mic this is like kind of uh for live music applications this is like the the generic microphone of choice for live vocals um but it makes a great uh entry level microphone for pretty much for, for any kind of speaking purposes um so like it's a common recommendation like for a first podcast microphone um uh but uh there's a couple broad categories of mics that you would use in other applications uh you might call like there's a dynamic microphones which this one is um there's also the condenser microphones um which are without getting too technical and they're more sensitive uh and require a little bit of power called phantom power um so some microphones require a sort power source this one does not there's phantom powered mics. There's also something called plug-in power. If you're using a mic that's designed to work with a camera, some of them require that kind of power. Um, there's also, <laughs> if you're recording for something for video and you are uh, looking for to capture ambiance instead of like one person talking, you might use something like a field recorder like this one. Um, this is a Zoom H5. Uh, and so this has a pair of microphones on it and can be used to just like battery power to wander around and capture audio in the field. Um, it also has inputs. So I can use this as my like recording device as well as my microphone. Um, so, so that's like kind of like a really, really, huge and broad overview of mic options, right? Um, so Elaine, you you were mentioning that you specifically were curious about mics for podcasting applications or for, for advice for about, uh, is your idea for a podcast uh, audio only? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. So your, uh, your uh, needs uh, in terms of microphone, like you, it doesn't matter what it looks like, that's handy, right? Because you don't have to like hide it off camera or anything like that. Um, well, so I would also be doing interviews. 
Yeah. So, so then you, you know, you'd be thinking about needing a, a probably a second mic. Um, there are uh, microphones uh, that, well, okay. So like, let's, let's talk real quick about polar patterns um, because microphones are not all equal and they all, they do much different things. But one, one thing that they all have in common is they all have a polar pattern of some kind, which is how the microphone sort of picks stuff up. Uh, microphones aren't, are kind of like ears in some ways in that they hear stuff, but they're kind of not like your ear at all um, in that like they can be, they can be focused and, and uh, listen in a very focused way. And they can also be very broad and just like listen to all sources around them. Uh, that shotgun mic that I was waving around is what's called, it has a very, what's called a tight polar pattern. It's called, uh, that picks up only the sound in front of it and a little behind it. Uh, whereas uh, that lavalier mic that I showed earlier is what's called an omnidirectional mic. It picks up sound equally in all directions. Um, so if you're recording multiple speakers, multiple sources, if you have uh, a directional microphone like this one, uh, which is a cardioid pattern, um, it's shaped like a heart, picks up more from the front and less from the back. Um, if, uh, if, if, you, if I point this at myself and then like Jay's over here saying something, uh, you're not gonna hear him nearly as well. Yeah, you can't, that, you can probably hear, you can hear him saying something, but he's kind of far away. And, and so, so this mic, you really want to be nice and close up to. Um, so if you're, if you're interviewing a, a second person, uh, you, and you were to use one of these mics, you might just get two of them. Uh, then you'd want, you know, cable to connect it to wherever it's going and a stand. So you uh, can set it up so you don't have to hold it. Um, pretty, pretty crucial. You don't want to be like, I mean, I guess you can hold it during interviews. That's a certain kind of a look, but if you're doing an audio podcast, it's not really, you know, you're not gonna have that cool moving the microphone back and forth look on a camera. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Um, so uh, they, they do also make, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting a little rambly and I'm getting straight to your topic. So I'm sort of diverging from the broad topic going straight to your thing. Uh, for, for like simplicity, um, we're talking about microphones, but if we're trying to actually capture audio, you gotta plug that microphone into something and and somehow get that audio recorded um so there's a few different options for that uh you can choose to use a, like an external recorder of some kind uh the zoom is a really popular choice they make these at all sorts of price points that work uh and you can also get like an audio interface uh that connects to a computer um if you plan on editing your audio on a computer anyways uh and it's not inconvenient to record near a computer uh, that can simplify things. You don't have to transfer files from anywhere. Like if I record on this thing, I have to like go and manually transfer files over USB or like with a flash card. And I hate doing that. If I have, if, if I can avoid it, I, I avoid it. So uh, right now this microphone is running straight into uh, the video PC using an audio interface. Uh, probably can't get that. On. Oh yeah, here. Just picked it up enough to show it to you. Ah, here's the back side of it. This is a Focusrite 6i6. Um, so it's, well, and, and we're seeing some other stuff on top. This thing's got my audio inputs and outputs. Uh, brings, I have a, I can connect two microphones and two headphone outputs. Uh, so uh, two people can be on mic and monitor what's going on, which is really handy. Uh, so being able to hear what you're recording is also pretty crucial. So uh, ha having a set of headphones, so if yes, use use gear is always a good choice. If yeah, uh, we buy a lot of our gear used on sale. Um, have, having headphones so at least you as the recordist can monitor the situation uh, and know what's happening is is super super essential. Uh, some people forget that step, uh, and you know you can just hit record, but that's uh, it, you're you're not going to be too happy about the results potentially. So. Um, that was kind of a rambling <laughs> selection of of uh, options of microphones that are out there. Uh, does anyone have any questions about any of those things? Uh, we can get more deep into specific topics if, if anyone has any specific questions. Uh, but it sounds like maybe not. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm stepping on your line. No, you, you. Go. Oh, uh, in my work, I just uh, gave uh, one wireless lab, uh, the uh, Sennheiser 300, uh, to each of my speakers. If I, I could cover up to four speakers. And um, it was real easy because each, each, uh, each speaker had his own individual input. But the other day I was considering doing uh, uh, a different kind of recording. It was a group uh, performance in a room. 
And I was really clueless because there were more people than I had laugh mics for, and that would probably not be anyway. Plus they were singing and performing, mm -hmm. which means fidelity was probably a uh, consideration. What, what would you tell me about approaching that situation? Yeah, uh, uh, that's such a perfect question. I love it. Um, so, so yeah, so a wireless lab is a great choice for dialogue, right? It, like it's great for speaking and four channels of wireless is awesome. What a luxury, you know, like you, that's a- My kid's inheritance. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but it's so nice to like have, be able to, to put everyone on their own channel. So like when you're like, just real quick. So like putting every person on their own input channel means that you have much more flexibility when you're mixing later, right? Uh, you, if, if everyone's recorded individually, you can adjust their levels. You can do all the things you need to do to it. Um, when you're trying to capture more speakers or more sources with one microphone, like, like in this gig that you're speaking about, um, all of a sudden you're having to sort of like mix stuff on the fly, you know, like, like if you, if you have more, more sources than you have mics or like more mics and you have available channels to record, um, there's a, there's, you know, it's a different solution depending on what your end goal is, like the product. So, so like, the, are you talking about like a choir performance? Is that the sort of thing you're talking about? Similar. Yeah, it was, okay. yeah, that's close enough analogy. Okay, great. Yeah, so yeah, it's like a, a room full of people. Cool. So, um, it, it, uh, what, what kind of performance is it specifically? Oh, this was an Ollie thing where they, uh, uh, a group of singers get together one year and they do a year in respect in review kind of thing. Okay, cool. And they take modern uh, or classic, you know, uh, music and apply their own lyrics to it and stuff like that. All oh, right, on. And then individual performers get up and do you know individual performances so it's a group plus individual performances oh, okay 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 yeah yeah so um so so like what comes to mind immediately is you have like two things that you maybe want to mic up you have like the stage wherever like the individuals might be you know like i'm assuming they're gonna like step up but maybe like if it's all in a circle are they all like all in a circle they're and, like, on standing stage up? okay yeah so okay great thank you so, so again, these are all like the logistical questions you got to ask. It's like lighting a, a set for, or like sh setting up a shots with a camera. You know, you, if you got to know what the room looks like and where all the performers are going to be and like how, how many there are. So, okay. So we know there's a group that you want to mic and we know there's a stage. So um, the, the, what comes to mind immediately, like what I would do with the mics that I personally have is like, I might set up like a, a pair of mics, like, uh, and I would probably choose condenser microphones for this application. Um, because they can get further away from the source. The dynamic mic works great if, if your speaker is going to be right up on it. Um, but if I'm going to like distance mic anything, you know, like, like this will start to fall off and sound pretty different. Pretty well. fast, yeah. So, um, whereas like, uh, so I have a pair, I don't have them with me, but I have a pair of small diaphragm condenser mics for the Rode NT5. Um, and and they're little cardioid mics, like little. They're like little pencil microphones. They're smaller than this thing, um, mm -hmm. and you can just like chuck them up on a stand, either on like a. You can mount them as a pair, or you can mount them individually. So I might think about like if it's a big room, either a single pair of mics in kind of like an X Y configuration mm -hmm. that looks kind of like this, you know, like with with like that kind of like cross setup, or you can just space them out and like put one on either side of the room to kind of and just kind of capture like the the stereo ambiance of the room and everything that's happening in it. You know, you might experiment with like closer or further away, depending on how much of the room, whether if the room sounds good, you can get further away. If the room sounds really gross and bad, the further away you get from the source, the more room you're gonna hear. And so like uh, that may or may not be pleasant depending on what's going on for you. Um, and then for the stage, you could probably get away with a single microphone pointed. If, if they're like vocalists, it sounds like, uh, you could probably get away with a single microphone pointed at or like you could get them with a vocal mic even uh or or some sort of like large diaphragm condenser like that they could like step away from sometimes you can't trust people to have mic technique like you got to know how to use one of these mics if you're not if you're not familiar with how to use it like you might you might be getting some kind of crummy sound so uh like a, a microphone that's like a large diaphragm condenser with like a more forgiving sort of pickup radius allows people to kind of maneuver around the mic and like if they're singing and want to get expressive with it like they can do that and they don't have to worry about gluing their lips to the microphone or anything like that so small diaphragms for the like a pair for the stereo for the crowd and like a large diaphragm condenser maybe or like a shotgun if you have one that you can just point straight at them 
on that stage to really like something that'll focus in on that stage sound and be just for the stage. That's my advice for that. So, so again, that's a very specific situation requires a specific set of tools. Um, different so, than like other, yeah, go ahead. So what I heard, heard you say that I was not familiar with was that a condenser microphone has a slower fall off as you, as you get away from the microphone. It's, so, so this is like, a, it's, it's not really true. I'm thinking in <laughs> but, but it's, it's functionally true, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, like technically it's not true, but like it, it, it practically that's how it feels when you use them. Uh, okay. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to give practical advice here without getting too nerdy. Uh, it really has to do with like the those, those mics are generally just they're more sensitive and they're like you apply more gain, so they're just hotter, and and so like uh, and they sound. Whereas if I turn this thing up to be that like it's it's hard to, it's hard to explain without getting into like real technical stuff. But right. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for that. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. Anyone else have a specific situational question about mic choice? Yeah, I was thinking that we could talk a little bit more about um, other live events. We have another addition to the meeting. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he wants to introduce himself Hello. really quickly. Sure. Yeah, my name is Zach Leatherwood. I haven't, I'm really alien to uh, to audio, recording audio. I, oh, cool. I've done some uh, several weddings and elopements, but this com coming up in in this month, I have a a wedding with with that's asking for professional audio. So mm -hmm. I the tools I have to work with are um, lav mics and and shotgun mics. And, Great. Yeah, and those were the the tools I was thinking of using. Cool. Uh, is this gig just you? Um. Yes, just me. Ooh, okay, one cool. man stand. Or, yeah. 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 So um. So like, do you have by any chance like the like uh, the ability to mount your shotgun on the camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like that that would be like like I'd be thinking about that like, and I mean you know like when when it's just you and you've all got to also capture video you know like you can't you can't be putting in like all like the brain power into micing things up beautifully you know like and especially like if you're ro if you're doing roving stuff like post ceremony or whatever like it's gonna be camera audio so for the ceremony however like or like anything where you can, it can be stationary and you can it can be a little more predictable you know you, you can like you, you can like set up like a shotgun you can set one of your shotguns like up on a stand you know like like either like a low stand like hide it like below the shot or i don't know you gotta start hiding things is when you do that that's the only problem right um but if you can figure out a way to hide it like you can do that it just gets squirrely as you i'm sure you know like when people start moving around because if that booms in a fixed place and they and they go off axis you're not going to be able to move it again you know what i mean and so like like it's the sort of thing where it'd be really like ideally there'd be like a you'd have a boom op or something but you know we don't live in the ideal world we live in the real world uh <laughs> so like like you're probably like slapping laughs on on like the like whoever you can up there and then like you know at least ha having that shotgun on your mic is probably going to be the that's what i do i don't know if you have any uh, you, you probably missed the question here no i heard it yeah. okay like, that's that's pretty much Jay's our, Jay's our resident video guy. Yeah. Well, I'm here. I'm going to grab my stuff because I actually have a shoot to go to. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, easy shotgun on your uh, camera is probably the easiest way to do it. So you don't have to worry about. Um, they do make little, like, um, Oh, we can't uh, hear you very well today. Do you mind? To help make it a little better. Can they not hear me? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> probably one thing that I should suggest would be. Off he goes. <laughs> uh, getting, sorry, getting something like this. Um, essentially, this is like a. It allows you to plug XLRs into your camera, and then you like if your camera doesn't have a headphone monitoring uh, jack or anything like this. Um, this little box is sort of like just an extension to. It's it's essentially like a mini mixer and preamp all in one, and it just runs off uh, nine volt batteries, and it's super. Uh, super useful it's just like um oh, what do they call these things so uh, i mean it's a preamp essentially yeah it's a camera preamp specifically designed to like mount underneath so you like mount your mount it to your tripod and then mount you know your camera on the other end and you've just got a little like thing that you can control the audio and the input into your camera that's how you kind of level up 
to a camera mounted um, mic. Yeah. So um, I guess another thought is like, if you have like multiple cameras too, you know, like you can, you, uh, you, you might like, and you, it sounds like you have multiple shotguns you could use if you're having like a, for, for like a ceremony, you know, just like capturing audio anywhere you can, you know, like, like, like if you have those labs and you can like mix them down to like your main camera, but then you have like a secondary camera on a tripod, like you might as well put a mic on it if you have one, you know, and like j just in case you lose something, like you, you may not, you might you may not choose to use that audio at all. But like if like the, if one of the labs goes out in the middle of the ceremony or something like that, you know, like it's nice to have a backup. You can just delete that data later if you don't need it or whatever. Yeah, I, uh, I, say that I have a suggestion to share and that is, um, this little thing, this is a Tascam DR10. It's a standalone recorder mm. and it comes with a lav mic attached that you attach and you put that on a bride and you just turn it on and leave it on and then you sync it up later. The bride doesn't have much to say, you know, like I do or something like that. <laughs> but that in its standalone, you're not trying to sync it with anything. You can do that in post. Mm. And this little thing I got on sale from B&H for about a hundred bucks, I think. And that's a real simple solution. Totally. So. There's a handful. I mean, you know, like if you're if you're thinking about tooling up for this thing too, like there's a there's a handful of uh, wireless transmitters that also do like uh, recording on the device. Although, like I think they tend to be kind of pricey. Uh, it's kind of like a best of both worlds solution. Um, but I I think there's like a limit. There's something about so, someone has some patent on it, so it's limited who gets to produce those. Um, yeah. Yeah, are you are you thinking about like buying some equipment for this, like just to, to make sure it's done yeah, right type I've, thing? I've rented some, and I've I'm borrowing some the the, the lav mics. I'm borrowing they're, they're just a, tr a wireless transmitter, so I okay. hook it up and then it goes connects directly to the camera. Oh, chill, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. So you're like, uh, with all those mics, I guess my one thought is like. You, you probably like want to capture them to different cameras because otherwise you're going to need some way to mix them down like to your camera. Do you have like a, do you have any kind of recorder or mixer or, any, or anything? Okay. So you're just, yeah, great. So, so like, um, it seems like in my limited experience, again, I'm, I'm more of a music audio guy. So like uh, maybe Brianna, you can speak more to this, but like, it seems to me that cameras tend to be like at, at best stereo, but sometimes exclusively a mono input. Um, so like, uh, Sometimes you can get like left, you can like fake two channels, just like put, put one pin, one mic to the left and one to the right to get kind of like a faux stereo out of your uh, camera. Um, but a lot of times you're just, it's just not that flexible. And so just being able to capture audio, you know, like capture the audio to like camera two and camera one or whatever, like allows you to have multiple channels for post editing stuff, which will be the most flexibility. You know, the more like, the less like mixing down you have to do to a, single analog source if that makes sense you know like where you can't go back and edit it and separate it later then then like the more flexible you are later if that makes sense. yeah and another thing that i was kind of talking with doc about was whether or not they have a soundboard and that'll make a big difference because if they do if you find out that they do have one i think it would be really beneficial to um to get a recorder and plug that into the soundboard um, to have that because that's high quality that means that they're already mic'd up and that you'll yes. get the mix um, from there and the one that I have is a, a zoom as well and it has an option for four channels so what I do is I you just bring like an XLR cable and then you can plug it into their soundboard so you get that direct feed you just have to make sure that they like um, t check their levels so that you can adjust your mic level beforehand to make sure it doesn't like peak or it's, you know, at a good spot. And then um, it has four channels. So two of them records stereo from the soundboard. And then it also has little microphones on it that records from there as well. So you kind of just point it towards the uh, ceremony and that also is capturing kind of like ambient audio. That's not going to be as good as your uh, shotgun mic but it's capturing like the overall sounds and it's a really good backup because when it comes to any sort of live performance, things can definitely go wrong. And yeah. backups is really Absolutely. Uh, important for sure. Thanks for mentioning the, the like PA, right? Cause I, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, if they're, if they're like using loudspeakers, like, and they're amplified at all, like 
typically there's a way to grab a line out from there. It's not always going to be XLR output. It might be quarter inch. It might be eighth inch. So being prepared with some like different kinds of cables, you know, um, sometimes some weird mixers, it's RCA is the only uh, spare output, you know, like, so it really all depends on what they're like, uh, mixer setup looks like so if you can get any advanced information about the like uh what their sound like it's pr that's probably like too specific I'll, I'll i'm just gonna guess right now that you will not get that information that specific uh just based on my experience playing a lot of weddings uh where i ha where they supply the pa and i don't get to find out about it until i get there <laughs> so uh so just be you know be prepared like your your gig bag will contain a lot of adapters that you may only need once and you'll be very glad that they were in there you know um i just want to say real quick too brianna you mentioned uh setting your level so you're not clipping um that's probably the second most important thing aside from having the right microphone maybe the most important thing even if you have the wrong microphone for the job uh if it clips it will definitely be wrong. No, you can have the best microphone in the world. And if you record terrible clipping audio, uh, it will be terrible. So um, I just want to say a thing about clipping every like, like when you record a microphone that that signal needs to be amplified so that we can hear it. And so that occurs. Uh, we have preamps, right? So so most anywhere you see a knob that, that you can turn or anywhere you can adjust the volume, and make it louder. That's a preamp. Um, so like uh, then when we need to convert our analog audio signal to a digital signal to capture it for recording, um, that goes through what's called analog to digital conversion. Um, and so that conversion has a maximum level. And if you exceed that level, you uh, the information that exceeds that level is lost and it is replaced with a flat line uh, at, at digital maximum. Uh, so this is called clipping. Um, and it's really the only, aside from just like pointing your microphone in the wrong direction, it's like the only like irreversible mistake that you can make pretty much. Uh, you can't really unclip things. Uh, and so like we, we refer to this as like to, to avoid this, we talk about gain staging, where it's like you're, you're setting levels so that they're the appropriate level for wherever they're going at every stage of the process. So, you know, your microphone might move from f through the cable to a preamp, which has a knob and that you, that might feed into your microphone, which, or your, I'm sorry, your camera, which might also have some volume controls. Um, and, and all of these things are going to have like a certain input level above which they're not very happy. And that's dependent on the microphone and how, or the, or like the PA system and how loud that's turned up, how loud I am on the mic, all that stuff. So this is why having some good headphones that are well isolating for when you're on set. Um, I'm using these right now. These are the uh, HD 280s, they're Sennheisers. Um, uh, they're about a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, and these are some, they're, I kind of hate them because they're so isolating, but they're great because they're so isolating. So like, uh, if you, I don't know, I, I, I really like listening on open back headphones when I'm listening for pleasure or like, like mixing and trying to do creative stuff, but they bleed like crazy and they also let in external noise like crazy. So you can't use those on location because they won't give you an accurate picture. Whereas these, I can like squeeze the cups down tight and I'm only hearing like bone conduction and the sound of zoom now, you know, and so... Uh, just being able to really clearly isolate what's going on so you can just be sure that you're capturing good levels. And then when, with, with a clipping, usually like your gear will have some kind of clipping indicator, but sometimes like, like don't assume that they're all work the same way. Cause I've been noticing that the audio gear and the video gear has different levels at which lights turn red and it means different things when the lights turn red. So listen and pay attention. And whenever you're, when in doubt, err on the side of recording a little too quiet because you can't unclip things, but you can always turn it up. Exactly. And there's, um, Corey, I don't know if you could talk more about this because I don't know as much about it, but I think there's a way on some recorders, right, to sort of record at two different levels. Like you can have one channel at a certain mm -hmm. record level and one at a different one for like safety. It seems to be an option that that is mostly exclusive to like higher end field recorders, although it's trickling down into the lower end ones. I think there is a cheaper Tascam recorder, one of those under camera mounting ones. I think it's maybe the maybe the seventy D. Does that one do it too? This one does it. Oh, cool! Yeah, it yeah. records at two levels. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's a common feature uh, where where you basically get a redundant backup that's maybe ten decibels quieter. Um, and so like, if you accidentally clip, there's a backup recording that didn't clip. Uh, there's also, if we're talking about interesting recording features, um, 
without getting too nerdy about what bit depth is about, um, there are now 32 bit recorders, which allow you to record sound as loud as you want without clipping. Uh, they contain essentially two eight, uh, AD converters uh, that operate at two different levels. And so you can literally record sounds as loud as you want and you cannot clip them. Uh, it seems like magic to me. I've never used it myself and put it through the test, but it's kind of like, uh, it, it's sort of the hot new technology and also like way overkill for any application because anyone who's done audio for any period of time knows to make things not clip and it's not that hard if you just know what you're doing. Anyways, being mindful, watching your levels and listening and when in doubt, record it a little quieter. Those, those are the big ones. I, I am a, uh, a one man band. Okay. And my recommendation is that you set all of the audio so that you don't need to mess with it while you're doing your video. Just have it set up so that it goes and you don't have to listen to it on your headphones. You, you can pay attention to what's going on and capture it on the camera and the audio you've set up so that it's bulletproof and you don't have to touch it while you're recording. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to, like, and also like it, it it kind of sucks if you have to go in and start messing with levels during things. Sometimes you'll hear, like if you have like a scratchy knob, sometimes you'll he actually hear yourself turning knobs on like gear or something like that. Or you'll hear button presses, there can be handling noise, or you just end up with a recording at a bunch of different levels and you have to go and post and like clip gain things until everything's all right. And it's just nicer if all of your audio is recorded at the same level. And so, so absolutely, yeah. So, so run some checks, you know, before like, don't, don't try and like sound check at the ceremony. See, so like, if you're doing this wedding, see if you can actually get someone to sit down and do a sound check. Like, uh, if they, if they're specifying, they want professional audio like that, you should be like, Hey, this is what we need to do to make it professional. Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, so like, if you can, it doesn't have to be the actual people at the ceremony, but if you can get someone to stand somewhere in that space, just confirm that the gear works or like, if they have a PA system, check the level coming out of that. But again, yeah, like Richard said, get it so that you, once you're rolling tape, that you don't have to tweak anything if you can help it. Maybe easier said than done, depending on what your setup is, but that's that's the dream. Is that you can set the sound so it's so as foolproof as possible so you can focus on capturing a good picture. Great, thank you. A question that I was thinking of is that I don't have a preamp and mm -hmm. I, I don't have the equipment for, for, for mixing like that. Should I, is that something that I, that like I, I need or, or, it, or is it something you can, you can get by without? Um, so like if you if your mics function with your gear, you know, like, like the, then, then they, you know, if they capture audio that's comes into your camera at a reasonable level, then that's all like, there's some sort of preamplification taking place that's working for you, you know? Um, so like, I, I would say n no, but it sounds like you have like three or four sources, right? Um, and so you just have to make sure that you have a way to get all their sources to some sort of destination that can accept them, you know? Like if you're, like again, so this is where someone, one of y'all who knows more about the camera audio technology might answer this question better, but like, uh, I, I'm not, it's not clear to me that like they all will accept stereo audio and like that some might be mono only, is that true? Does anyone know? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Who knows? So, so checking the specs on your camera and seeing like what kind of like audio input it will accept, you know, because like those little 3.5 millimeter plugs can be all kinds of different things. They can be mono, they can be stereo, they can be th three channels. Uh, they can provide power or not, you know. Uh, and, and so like you may need something to, well, so basically like if say you have, I, I don't, are we talking three or four mics for your thing? four uh, four mics okay so uh so with four mics you know if you have and and how many cameras uh, two, two cameras cool so 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 if you have two cameras and you can and both cameras accept a stereo input you might you probably need some sort of adapter to split your you know like some something to split that plug into two plugs so you can plug two things into it um here's where you have to look up the specs of your specific camera and see if it accepts this kind of thing but i think like oh yep I was wondering, because wait, are your lav mics wireless? Mm. Yeah, they are. And what are they? Um, 
connecting to? Are they for your camera? Yeah, they're they connect direct, directly to the camera. Okay, oh, cool. is it like one lob to one camera, one lob to the other camera? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So cool. So then you sounds like you need more inputs um, because like those 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 wireless out like uh, that transmitter is going to be going to take up that whole input on that camera, right? Uh, Does that mean that his shotgun mic won't be able to work on the camera as well? I think so. Without without a little mixer thing like Jay had, or um, a Y cable. Yeah, or a Y cable. Yeah, if 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 the if that works for the camera and like with the power situation and everything again, which it sounds like it probably would since since like the the shotgun probably either takes batteries or the shotgun probably doesn't need plug-in power. I would guess. I'm not sure if plug-in power passes down a Y cable. Oh yeah, well, it's, you know what I mean. Certainly not going to get fa phantom power off of a camera. Right, right, right. Yeah, but so, so yeah. So if the, yeah, okay. So powering your <laughs> microphones. <laughs> yes, this it always gets so interesting. The more gear you add, the the more interesting it gets. So, so some microphones don't require power. Some require plug-in power that like 2.5 volts off the camera, and some require a full 48 volts phantom power. Um, and then. There are some mics that uh, will take a nine volt battery in lieu of that 48 volt phantom somehow. Uh, so if, uh, if, you have, if you have a shotgun mic that needs phantom, you need to, some way to supply it with that power. Um, the simplest solution to get is like one of those zoom recorders like that has an XLR output. So to get that phantom power moving, um, you generally need something that has an actual XLR output you're familiar with what an XLR cable looks like? It's like a this connector on the end of the thing. Yeah. Um, so like it's like big fat three pin guys. So like they're too generally too big to go into the cameras. You know they do make little adapters to like I don't know the connector and the kind of cable are they're they're you know like you can put a bunch of different kinds of connectors on the same cable. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's not always a one to one thing, but generally I don't know of a lot of gear that passes Phantom out of a 3.5 millimeter connection. Um, it seems to be more of a full XLR thing. So something like that Zoom H5, I don't know if you saw me holding that up earlier, um, but it's got two XLR uh, jacks on the bottom and they both will pass phantom power. Um, so something like that is, is probably gonna be necessary to utilize all of those microphones at once. You could also probably flip all that around, put the shotguns on the, on the cameras, if you can find a way to power them from the cameras, I don't know if that'll work, and then run like the like wireless mics into a portable recorder and then the shotguns will pick up what the mics are pointing at, where the cameras are pointing at and then you'll just have good audio from the wireless like it sounds like you might need another piece of gear though no. yes yeah i like that idea i like making a lot of good wireless like portable recorder that's what uh, you're saying right yeah that yeah totally especially yeah. you got those two transmitters and you got you're gonna have to have two inputs and, like a, a Zoom H4 or H5 would would do the trick. Um, also, maybe worth looking into is uh, since you said you don't have like a preamp, and if you're doing a one man thing, um, there's uh, oh, I have dual monitor. I'm not I'm on someone else's computer. I have dual monitors now. Um, there's a uh, Tascam makes a pretty cool uh, uh, recorder that I was thinking about getting, but also mounts on a camera uh, called the DR70D. Um, which I think might be more up your alley. Can I share my screen real quick? Oh, no. Um, are you able to enable a screen sharing? Brianna? Oh, yeah, that's OK. Do so I'm going to show you this thing real quick. Allow to, it doesn't say that. I'm going to make you a co-host. OK, works. yeah, that should work. Oh, wait, no, I did that to Corey. You're mm -hmm. Jay now. <laughs> It's I'm Jay now, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm now Jay. Um, okay, so this thing, DR70D. So um, among so oh, I forgot it has stereo mics built in. So so this is a lot like those zoom recorders, but it's in a form factor that mounts under your camera, so you can have it with you, which would be nice, you know. Um, so among other things, it's got four XLR inputs, and these are actually combo jack inputs. So these will take either XLR or quarter inch TRS inputs. Um, so like grabbing a line out of, uh, say like a PA system or something like that. Um, you also take, take audio 
send audio in and out of your camera. There's headphone output. There's another line. There's a whole, tons of inputs and outputs on here. Uh, so it's super convenient and you can get that all stuck under your camera. I, I think this thing is like, I forget how much it costs. It's like in the three or $400 range. It's similar in price to like the, the zooms that have these features, but the form factor seems to make it pretty appealing for people either who want to mount it under the camera or like you want to put together like a little mini sound bag kind of setup. Uh, if you, if you're seeing like location sound mixer people with their little like sound bag and they're like mixer that points up you know, this, like the face of this would work all right for that. Whereas those Zoom recorders are like hand, like they're kind of like, they're handheld, they're convenient for that. But when you start running a bunch of things in and out of them, they're kind of a real drag. Like, uh, cause like they, they have like cables coming out of all directions and, and like it, it can just be a real mess. So uh, yeah, something like this would allow you to like mix all the audio down to a uh, single camera too. Uh, but I think you can record straight to this as well. An internal recorder. Yeah, so so you could actually, like the other advantage of this is then you can get uh, all, like I think four or maybe even six channels independently. Um, four channel, okay, no, it's only four channel inputs. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so like uh, I guess the probably external in one and two probably over like, uh, comes in on the same channel input channel as the the xlr one and two or whatever so again read your specs because sometimes the, there's like redundant inputs and outputs that correspond to the same digital inputs and outputs but uh but yeah so this thing would allow you to capture all your inputs you could and, and then you'd be free to mix them down and post uh which is ultimate flexibility uh yeah that's that thing uh, really quick, can we touch on um, post production really quickly? Just sure. Quickly. Yeah. So, um, so this is kind of like, like again, I'm like a music uh, guy, and so like, uh, like we tend to live in the world of post production uh, a lot, you know, uh, because so much, there's like the the performance happens real quick, but then there's you know like uh, when when we're not just trying to deliver on a deadline and, and it becomes a creative process, there's all sorts of interesting things you can do. So. Uh, but since I'm talking to videographers here, we're going to not get into like phasers and flangers and uh, tape echo and stuff like that. And we'll talk about kind of just like the sort of basic tools. So it's like um, in terms of post-processing, there, there's not like a ton of things that you need to know about or need to do, but there's like a handful of things that you will want to know about. Um, and like the number one thing is like volume, <laughs> right? Like uh, if you're if you have all these mics from a bunch of different sources, like you'll probably need to lay them out in some piece of software that allows you to adjust the volumes to have them be reasonable. You know, uh, they're not all going to be like not everything is going to come in at the same level, and so like adjusting the volumes of things to, to be the appropriate volume for your thing is is what you want. Um, depending on the software you're using, the way it works is different. Uh, so I'm not going to get into like how to go about doing it. You know. Um, but you know, you can turn the entire file up and down. You can turn sections of the file up and down. Uh, if you're using music software like I do, you can even like write like a sort of like what we call automation, where it's like a like a basically recording me turning a knob up and down and 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 recording the output from that. Um, but uh, just don't underestimate like turning things up and down as a like can just solve so many problems. Uh, things that seem like you might need some other crazy tool, just like turning like turning something down and or copying and pasting a little bit of like room tone or silence from somewhere else. Uh, so another piece of advice, if you're capturing audio ever anywhere, grab room tone, which is like the sound that your audio system makes when no one is speaking or doing anything. Uh, so like the self noise of your system, the ambiance of the room or the space or whatever. So that way, if, if you have uh, something that goes like just like some weird glitch or something like that you have some sort of believable silence and not like uncanny digital silence to replace it with um <laughs> i recorded an audiobook or someone you know uh, reading an audiobook and and uh the entire post-production job has been pasting room tone over little <laughs> bits of things it's i'm never doing this again i swear <laughs> i will not do it again but um but that's how you do it when when the you know if, like when someone takes a breath and you don't want to hear that breath you can't turn it down because if you turn it down to where you can't hear it then it's just silence and that sounds it's you know like you can you, you can, it's just uncanny and bizarre sounding so uh capturing some good room tone crucial um 
very important. Yeah, yeah. It's something like I always forget to do this too, and then you regret it. So like, I, I try to make it like the first thing I do. Uh, you know, always check that off the list. Uh, so aside, so volume and like having some something that's like faux silence. And the other tools that are like really the, the main tools that you use are uh, panning, right? Because uh, most of the time we're delivering for at least a two channel audio. Uh, so you have the choice of placing your sound anywhere from left <laughs> to right uh, 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 within the, the soundscape. And you know, like uh, with, with film and like videography stuff, you're probably not gonna do a whole lot of this kind of creative panning, you know? Um, but uh, you'll probably have the speakers in the like, in the center or in both channels equally and if you end up recording some sort of ambience with like stereo microphones like richard if you're recording that uh choir thing with like a pair of microphones you might take those and pan them hard left and right um that's good that? oh also i just thought of something sorry to jump around on our top no problem but um Dr., you're talking about with your um shotgun mics you know facing the ceremony and i was just thinking if they do have a pa system they're probably going to be like having these big speakers that are you know and i feel like the audio in that case you wouldn't you would not want it to be like facing the stage because the main loud audio is not going to be from the actual people it'll be from the speakers mm -hmm. so maybe having a, maybe a microphone that's like further back and more capture facing the speakers. Yeah, would be you can actually just pull, mic the speaker. <laughs> like that's a thing you can do too. Um, it's all like here's where like having a bunch of different tools and just like just being ready for what the situation looks. You know, like and and like like the more of these gigs you do like the more prepared you'll be for a different situation and probably everyone will involve something that you didn't <laughs> expect and unfortunately you know we're not like in la where you can't just like cruise down to some rental house and just like rent anything you need here uh so like being a little over prepared or at least like having a friend to call <laughs> or something you know the, you know, I don't know where your location is for this thing, but but like the wedding gigs I play tend to be like far enough out of town that like we got to like bring backups of a lot of things just in case, you know, mm. that's just kind of how it goes. Well, cool. We're at the yeah. end of the meeting. It's almost four. Do you guys have oh any other questions at all? Was Thank that? you for hosting. Yeah, of course. It was a lot of fun. I had... Uh, yeah, this this has been great. Just you, you guys uh, throwing throwing things around, and it's yeah, I've been able to bounce off score questions that I didn't even know I had. Uh, I so I'm I'm pretty unfamiliar for using shotgun mics and to set the the volume level and things like that. It, it, you you guys were saying that sometimes if you know if you're plugging into a preamp or if your if your camera it's going to have different uh, you know, the opportunities for, for clipping are going to be, you know, in the, in the preamp and in the camera. And, and mm -hmm. so will I have for the, for the, the shotgun mics, which, I, which I'm renting and I haven't gone yet. Uh, I'm, I was going to have a, a one day before the, the wedding to, to mess around with them. And to, oh, great. That's to, awesome. to get an understanding, but is yeah. there like a, an input on like a physical input on the, on the shotgun mics that I that I change, or is it all in the camera? Or so, uh, no, totally. Um, there's probably depending on the mic you get, you may like like some of them will have some controls. Like typically, the settings on the mic will be uh, if it has any, because some don't. Um, there'll be something called like a low cut like filter, like which will like eliminate all frequencies below a fixed level. If you're recording dialogue, you'll probably want to enable that. Um, because it's usually like like sub bass frequencies, and you don't want to hear that. Um, some mics will have a control that's called a pad that'll like cut the. I think Jay's uh, NTG Four Plus has a 10 dB pad, so you you just like press that button on the microphone, and it drops the level by 10 decibels. Um, the only time I would ever feel the need to use that is if I couldn't, if if I was just turning things down, and that like if my preamp was all the way down and it was still too loud. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so like. You probably won't have that problem in, unless you're recording some sort of really loud source, like a guitar, like a guitar amp turned up super loud, or like or, or like a really loud PA speaker. So like like for your situation, I'm guessing you won't run into that. And it, it's just about like setting the input level at your at your recorder or preamp or whatever. So that uh, 
just be aware that if you have multiple places to which you can set the gain that you don't like, you don't, you don't want to like crank the, like the, like some of the games, one of the game stages might sound better than the other. You don't want to like just crank one and then turn the other way down. You know, just like set, set them to like, it's just a reasonable level at each stage of the process. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's kind of vague. I'd give you a better answer if I knew more specific about the equipment, but yeah. Um, Have you done this before? Uh, what our, exactly? Our guest. Oh. Oh, um, no, this is going to be my first time. Using. Oh boy. You're going to learn a lot yeah. <laughs> in a real short period of time. Uh -huh. yeah, Good I'm luck. Really nervous, but excited. Yeah. Uh, you're really smart to give yourself a day. And so spend that day and like, also like check out the audio like like shoot stuff in the morning and like record it and then check it out in the afternoon do you know what i mean and like uh see how how like see what you got and what you can what you're able to do with it you know um and maybe yeah. you could uh, attend the wedding rehearsal oh geez that's a good yeah, one I, I, I am attending the rehearsal yes yeah it's a good practice point yeah. make Excellent. mistakes there yeah yes mm -hmm. Because you can like be as prepared as possible going into it, but honestly, during the rehearsal, that's when you'll be, like realize what's going to happen and kind of build your plan from there. And then even then, it'll probably change a little bit. So, being flexible in the moment is a big part of it for sure. And kind of adjusting. It's hard, I guess, not having a an assistant. Um, yeah, it just being you will be hard. But are you? Um, are you in charge of both cameras and the audio? Yeah, I am. Okay. And are both cameras going to be stationary during the wedding? Or are you kind of walking around with it? Or um, I was gonna, I was gonna do a mix of setting up, keeping keeping one camera stationary for a long period of time, and then maybe, you know, mm -hmm. setting up setting it up somewhere else, and mm -hmm. and then having the other one more, a bit more mobile. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely make sure that your audio is all good. Even if like you have both cameras stationary at the beginning, just to make sure that you're getting good audio um, and then going to making one mobile, that'll be good. Because once you're moving around with one camera, you can't really check your audio and something could be happening or being weird. No, I guess just, yeah. Yeah. But also like, so like thinking about like having like the most important audio running into the camera that you're handling then, you know what I mean? So like, if that's the labs then like maybe that's, or I don't know, you know, you have to, you have to make that choice, I suppose. But, uh, here's where like something like that task cam would be really handy because you could have it all running into the one recorder and then, you know, like you can adjust everything. You can mount that to the camera you're handling and adjust it on like there and be able to monitor it. Key. Well, well, I have to take off, but if you guys want to be in contact, if you have any other questions, Zach, I'm sure Corey okay. and Richard would be happy to answer. Thank you again. I hope we get to do something like this again. Yeah, definitely. I'll keep you in the loop uh, about our future meetings. We're still doing okay. it other week, so. Thanks again. Bye bye. Bye. Really yeah. bye. See ya. Um, bye. If if yeah. any of y'all uh, if any of y'all have any more questions and would like to pick my brain about anything else, um, you can uh, email me. I'm Corey Goldman. I'm not Jay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Feel free to shoot me an email. It's just Corey Goldman at gmail.com. I'll put it in the chat right now. Uh, or, yeah. Um, and uh, or I don't know. I guess you can hit me up on Instagram too or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there, there's my Instagram. And so. Uh, yeah, holler at me, uh, and I'd be happy to uh, give you more detailed or specific advice. I know, Elaine, we didn't get to talk about your topic much, uh, but I probably am more knowledgeable about that than these other topics, so I could give you some probably quick five-minute advice. That'd be pretty helpful. Uh, awesome. yeah. Well, well, thanks so much, Corey. It was yeah, thanks so for inviting me. Having you here. Cool. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. See you all.